Hello everyone, welcome to IAS Baba 60 days rapid revision series for prelims 2022. This is day 13 and we are taking up quality topics. So these are the topics we are going to discuss. And before going to the topics, friends, we should understand that some questions are coming which are not at all present in any books. Say for example, this question on parole. So this is not present in any books. So how you will prepare for those? But parole was there in current affairs. So Stan Swami, he was denied parole multiple times and he ultimately died in prison itself. So on that context, the questions have been appearing. So if you have taught it on a daily basis, if you have analyzed these topics, so what obvious they become easy. Say for example, here you consider the statement when a prisoner makes out a sufficient case, parole cannot be denied to such persons. So because it becomes a matter of right. So this is not so extreme and moreover it is ethically correct. So it becomes a human right for any state to give a parole if there is a sufficient reason. And then coming to the second one, so second statement says that state governments have their own parole rules. So but obvious, state governments have to have their own parole rules because law and order is a state subject and but obvious parole is a very simple topic and parole can be given by every prison. So they need not consult the central government every time they give a parole. So practical ground reality makes the second statement correct. So like ethical judgment and practical ground reality is the thing where you have to think and then answer. So follow all these approaches and then we consider one more question on the judicial custody and police custody. So here we might have seen uh, every time in the movies or we have read in the current affairs in the Arnab Goswami case and other cases like how these people they were put in prisons or lockups. So you cannot say that Arnab Goswami was in the lockup. He was in the prison itself. So how that happens? Say for example, if a person is arrested, so he will be put in the police custody for 24 hours. And after that, he will be submitted to the court. And once the once he is submitted to the court, and if the court denies the bail, he will be directly sent to the jail. Okay. So there he will be given the jail numbers, jail uniform, etc. So likewise, if you analyze, so but obvious, you will get these questions right. So just by mugging up the things, you will not get such questions right. So pick up from the current affairs the topics and analyze and prepare accordingly. So apart from that, so it is also our duty to revise some of the facts. So which were genuine and from where the questions have appeared and from where UPSC has the intensity and instincts to ask the questions. So we begin with the gist of 42nd amendment. So here we have the 42nd amendment added some words to the preamble. That is the socialist, secular and integrity. These were the words added and then in the seventh schedule. So the amendment, it transferred five subjects from the state to concurrent list, that is education, forests, then weights and measures, then protection of wild animals and birds and administration of justice. So these were removed from the state list and they were added to concurrent list. Then but obvious fundamental duties were added in the same 42nd amendment and regarding parliament, some new articles were also added. That is the amendment made the president bound to the advice of the cabinet and then it allowed the center to deploy central forces in state to deal with conflicting situations. So that was done with the addition of article 257A and then directive principles. So they were given more precedence over fundamental rights and directive principles were kept beyond the judicial review. So however, this was nullified by the Supreme Court judgments in the future and also by 44th amendment. And then coming to more, so article 323A and 323B, they were introduced which will give for administrative tribunals and other tribunals. And then we have the DPSPs. So some of the new DPSPs were added. They were for the health and development of the children and then justice and free legal aid and then management of industries and then to protect and improve the environment. So these were added in the 42nd amendment. So you can always get a question like which of the following were added in 42nd amendment. So remember these keywords and mark only these ones. So questions have come. So make sure that you will revise. And then the next important amendment is the 44th amendment. So we look into the major postulates friends. Apart from this which we are discussing several other amendments came but they were undone or they were nullified in the subsequent amendments or in the future. So whichever are removed or whichever are undone, that is not the importance that has to be given because they were already obsolete. So whichever are present even today, so those clauses we have to revise because UPSC asks only those which are present and only those which are in the dynamic and which are being in the current affairs. So here right to property that was removed and was made a legal right. So this we already know and the question has come on article uh, 300A in the last prelims also. Then internal disturbance. So that was removed from the emergency clause and the armed rebellion was introduced. Okay. 
so instead of a word internal disturbance so they used armed rebellion then an emergency can be proclaimed only on the basis of written advice tendered to the president by the cabinet so this written advice was introduced because indira gandhi proclaimed emergency even without informing the cabinet then preventive detention cannot be more no longer than 2 months so no one can be uh, under preventive detention more than 2 months so earlier it was 3 months and the amendment made it 2 months so this is not implemented by the law only the constitutional amendment is present likewise so we have discussed in the first class like constitution provides only the bare minimum law and whatever detail that is present that has to be mentioned in the law so till now no amendments have been made so in the law even today 3 months is remaining and in the constitution 2 months is present then right of the media to report freely so without any censorship of the parliament and state legislatures proceedings so if it is fair and if it is true depiction of the story but obvious the free uh, freedom of expression and freedom of publication has to be given to them so that amendment was also made and then the amendment provided that fundamental rights guaranteed by articles 20 and 21 so they cannot be suspended during a national emergencies so these were some of the things which were present in 44th amendment then coming to next the pardoning power of president so here the president can use pardoning powers in the cases of the following that is when he is considering a case of punishment against a person who has committed an offense against a union law so regarding the state laws so that is not the jurisdiction of a president so that is the jurisdiction of a governor then when he is considering a case of a punishment where the punishment is awarded by the court martials or the military courts so here also the court martials and military courts they come under the exclusive jurisdiction of presidents governors they cannot touch these ones and then when he is considering a death sentence so we know that president can pardon the death sentence and only he can do that okay so governors they cannot pardon a death sentence and then we have the pardoning powers of president with regarding current affairs so why they are being in news say for example recently the madras high court it said that the pardoning power so the pardoning power of article 161 so that doesn't apply to the council of ministers so that applies exclusively for the governor and governor cannot delay a pardon in the name of the alibi that the council of ministers they didn't give me the advice so that should not be the reason for which a governor is delaying so now my question is like when a power of pardon is vested to the governor or a president why the courts are taking up this and why courts or supreme courts or high courts they will uh, give the orders for the pardon so that is mainly because of the writ petition so pardoning power although it is there so that comes into the judicial reviews domain if the governor or president are acting in malafide intentions so whenever there is extreme delays so people will approach the supreme court or a high court and supreme court or high court will issue the certiorari writ petition and they will take up the case from the governor or a president and then they will decide and here whenever they decide they have to do it solely on the procedure established by law not the forgiveness so forgiveness are the humanitarian rules so they apply only to the president or the governor and whenever a court is awarding the the pardon or clemency so that happens only by the procedure established by law and in what sense and in what situations a court can take up this only when a president or a governor is acting in malafide intentions okay so remember those things and this happen many times say for example the inter state river water disputes so these are not the exclusive jurisdictions of the courts so courts cannot touch them at all but why people will approach the supreme court or a high court because they approach it with the fundamental right that is due to lack of drinking water their fundamental right to life is violated so this is the reason they put in front of the supreme court and supreme court but obvious it is forced to take up such cases so although it is not in the authority to take up that case so it will take up and then so deal with such ones and there was one more debate regarding the rajiv gandhi assassinators that is the case was investigated by the cbi and only the central government or the president has the power to pardon them but now it is like the courts have said that the governor also can pardon them so now it is the power of the governor to pardon them but now governor is also delaying that so now what happens in future you will update okay so analyze all these things and study on the basis of application of knowledge not just the mugging up and then the governor's pardon overrides the section 433a 
So what is this all about? Say for example, the Criminal Procedure Code of 433A, it says that if a person is under life sentence or if he is under any sentence for that matter, so how can an executive, how can an administration release him? So they can release him only after 14 years. So if he has completed 14 years, so if he is well intended and if he shows the sign of transformation, if the administration feels that this person has become good and if he has transformed, so then they can release after 14 years. But this doesn't apply to the pardoning power of a governor. So a governor can release a person even before the completion of 14 years because there he is not con contemplating on the transformation of that prisoner. He is contemplating that. So he has to be pardoned. Okay. So pardoning power of governor is different from the transformation that we contemplate in the administration. So whenever a jailer releases a person, he has to wait for 14 years. Whenever a governor, he awards a pardon. So he can do it before the 14 years of completion. So we remember these things. And in the same way, we also remember the CRPC 436A. So that is basically for under trials. So this is an assignment to you. So go and see what does the 436A say and what are the conditions of under trials right now. And then the recent amendments. So amendments are also important. So 101st amendment. So that was introduced in the wake of goods and service taxes. And remember the articles 246A, 269A and 279A. So these were the new articles added. And then 102nd amendment. So that was basically for the National Commission for Backward Classes. So earlier we add only the National Commission for SCs and STs. So this was the new constitutional body that was added. So here article 338B and 342A. So these were the new ones added and then one not third. So that was due to 10% reservation for EWS sections. So again, friends, should the EWS category be inculcated in the NEET exam? So that is also being debated. So make sure that what is the Supreme Court's judgment on all those things you will remember. So Supreme Court had given the judgment like the reservation cannot solely be on the economic basis. So financial disadvantage is not the sole a uh, motto of reservation, it is social backwardness also. Then, one not fourth amendment. So, that says like to extend the reservation of seats for SCs and STs in Lok Sabha. So, this is mainly to extend the reservation that is already present in the constitution. And this amendment, it did away with the Anglo-Indians reservation. So, from now on in Lok Sabha, no nomination will be there for Anglo-Indians. And then, one not fifth amendment. So, this is to restore the state's power to make their own OBC lists. Okay. And here it is like it was annulling the Supreme Court judgment, which said otherwise. So it is like now the states can have their own OBC lists and they can come up with their own reservations. But however, overall reservation that cannot cross that 50%. So even that 50% is under the Supreme Court now. So what judgment it will give and what counter the parliament will give for that. So all those things you will update. And then the Constitution Scheduled Tribes Order Amendment Bill 2021. So here it is like the Scheduled Tribes Order we are amending. Okay. So Rajya Sabha passed the Constitutional Scheduled Tribe Order Amendment Bill 2021, which seeks to amend the constitutional list of scheduled tribes as recommended by Darunachal Pradesh. And the new bill provides for modifying the Part 18 of the schedule to the Constitutional Scheduled Tribes Order 1950 relating to the state of Arunachal Pradesh. So there is one constitution's scheduled tribe order which was enacted in 1950 and in that there is one part that is part 18 and in that there is one section for Arunachal Pradesh. In that tabular column for Arunachal Pradesh some changes are being made. So what changes are being made? The bill removes the abode tribes from the list of identified yastis in the Arunachal Pradesh. So abode tribe is removed in that table and then it replaces certain other tribes that is the Thai Kamti, the Mishmi Kaman or the Miju Mishmi and Idu Mishmi and Tarawon or the Digaru Mishmi. So these tribes are being added and abode tribes are being removed from that. Okay. So remember this regarding the Constitutional Scheduled Tribes Order Amendment Bill 2021. And then the right of an institution to get government aid is not a fundamental right. So recently Supreme Court ruled that government aid to an institution is a matter of policy and it is not a fundamental right. And the Article 30 of the Constitution of India is subject to its own restrictions being reasonable. So whenever government has a reasonable restriction, so that has to be applied. Then the right of an institution, whether run by a majority or minority community, have to equally follow the rules and conditions of the aid. So if 
an uh, in institution is not fulfilling the conditions, then government can deny the aid. So it is not a fundamental right. It is an exuberance or it is a munificence that government is extending towards an organization. Then government aid is a policy decision. It depends on various factors, including the interest of the institution itself and the ability of the government to understand and give the funds. So this is one topic which was in debate. So that's why I brought it. Then Supreme Court judgment on 97th Constitutional Amendment Act. So this was a simple topic. Say for example, the Supreme Court struck down certain provisions of the Constitution 97th Amendment Act 2011 in so far as it introduced clauses dealing with the working of cooperative societies within a state. Say for example, a cooperative society can be registered under two clauses. One is the State Cooperative Societies Act. Second is the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act. So now whenever the government came up with a new cooperative societies ministry, so now what happens is that now the government has the power to control both the state and multi-state cooperative societies. But the Supreme Court said that the central government doesn't have any power to control the state cooperative societies because the state cooperative societies or the societies which are registered under the state cooperative societies act. So they have been working and they have been administered solely by the state governments and central government cannot touch them. But however, they can touch or the central government can touch the multi-state cooperative societies or those cooperative societies which are registered under the multi-state cooperative societies act and on those other cooperative societies which are registered under the central cooperative societies act if the central government enacts such act in future. Okay, so this is related to federalism and that is why it was an issue. And then search criteria and election procedure of president. So here some questions were came like the president has to be a citizen by birth to be eligible for election. So that is not the case in India. So he should be a citizen only. He need not be citizen by birth. He can be citizen by naturalization. He can be citizen by descent or anything whichever the citizenship act provides. And then he should be 35 years of age. So remember this and he should be qualified to become a member of Lok Sabha. So mark this Lok Sabha and then he shall not be a member of either house of the parliament and he shall not be a member of a house of a legislature of any state and in case a member so he shall be deemed to have vacated this office so once he assumes the office of president and then president of president of india cannot hold any other office of profits so these are the simple ones so within these simple ones upsc will trick and give the statement so make sure that you will analyze them okay so here most importantly the lok sabha one because vice president, so for him Rajya Sabha is the criteria and then the term of office of president, president of India is elected for a term of five years. So this is not the case with the prime minister. So for prime minister, it is not five year term. It is the pleasure of the president. Okay. And until he enjoys the majority, then president is el eligible for re-election. So mark this because in US, he is eligible only twice. Then the term of office of president may be cut short if he resigns. So how he resigns? So he will uh, resign by addressing to the vice president. He will submit his resignation to vice president and or if he is removed by the process of impeachment. Okay. So on what charges a president is removed? On the charges of the violation of the constitution. So this is the only clause on which a president can be impeached. So mark this also. Then come to next the criteria and election procedure of president. Continuing. So what is the election procedure? So that is proportional representation by means of single transferable vote method and here the single transferable vote system. So that follows the procedure of transferring the votes of the losing candidate to other candidates who are still in race. Say for example, I have voted for four persons and here if the first person loses, then my vote goes to the second preference. Say for example, if I have voted for TN Shashan, so TN Shashan lost, so my vote goes to Abdul Kalam whom I have given the second preference. Then. The procedure in allocating the number of votes, say for example, the vote of MLA. So here how they are allocated, that is the total population of the state based on the 1971 census. So mark this 1971 and that is divided by the number of elected members of MLAs. So then that is further divided by 1000 so that the number will not be huge. Okay, So divided by 1000 means only to make sure that number is not so huge. And then in case of the number arrived at is higher than 500, then each member is allotted an extra vote. So why this clause? This clause is because in some state it should not be too much and in some state it should not be too less. Say for example, if 
in one state the population is too much so they will deserve one vote additional to have the more value of vote compared to other states which have less population so that the representation will be normalized okay so for that purpose one additional vote is given for them so that the uh, mlas of up uh, mlas of bihar so they should not contest that we have more representation but we have less value of votes compared to say a value of vote for an mla in kerala in manipur or any other states which have less population then the votes of np's so the total value of votes of all the states based on the 1971 population that is the total votes of mlas divided by the elected members of parliament so all these clauses we have studied but the logic behind this addition of 500 so that was important in this so such concepts you will have to make sure that you give some importance and then the criteria and election procedure of a vice president so here the vice president is elected by an electoral college consisting of all members of both the houses of parliament so mark this all members as important it is not the members present and voting only so all members should come then in accordance with the system of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote and the voting is done by secret ballot say the president election vice president election so all those go with the secret ballot but only the election of rajya sabha members and the election of vidhan parishad members so that goes it an open ballot because there so much of horse trading and defection will go on so that's why to curb that this secret ballot is converted into open ballot so mark those important ones and then a person cannot be elected as a vice president unless he is a citizen of india and is completed the age of 35 and is qualified for electing as a member of rajya sabha so mark this it is not lok sabha unlike president then a person is not also eligible if he holds an office of profit so but obviously it is present for president also then an election to be completed before the expiry of the term say for example if you are conducting the election of vice president so before he completes his term that is 5 years term the election has to be done but in case of any death or sudden termination of the term so at that point of time the election has to be done as soon as possible so here we have a difference say for example in case of president so if the term is terminated in middle so in case of death of a president so the constitution says we have to do the election before 6 months but in case of death of a vice president constitution doesn't give any uh, time period of 6 months it only says that it has to be held as soon as possible okay so mark this 6 months and as soon as possible as the two different ones then a person so elected is entitled to hold office for a full term of 5 years so not only for the remaining term but he will be having a full term because he is elected democratically and then the legislative powers of president so here what are the legislative powers the to summon or prorogue parliament as well as dissolve lok sabha so here there was a question in the prelims like can he summon or prorogue an assembly wherever he wants yes the constitution says that he can summon an assembly in wherever place he thinks fit so that means he need not assemble them or summon them only in the parliament or legislative buildings then he can also call for a joint session then he has the right to address parliament at the start of first session following each general election as well as the first session of each year so any kind so he can address then he has the authority to send messages to the houses of parliament and then when speaker and deputy speaker are vacant so he has the authority to appoint any member of lok sabha to preside that assembly so here mark that vacant as important so it is not the case when they are absent but when they are vacant say for example if the speaker is absent then deputy speaker will take the charge and then if the deputy speaker is also absent so then there will be other line of senior members so they will be listed as per the rules of procedure of lok sabha and they will take the charge okay so the president will enter only when the seats are vacant not when the seats are absent so mark this vacancy as the sole criteria else the house itself will take the charge and whoever the pre- the presiding officer nominates whoever the speaker or the deputy speaker nominates so he will become the speaker in case of absence and not in case of vacancy in case of vacancy president he will nominate and then the continuing with the legislative power of president nomination to rajya sabha then in so he will nominate some people so from various fields of achievement he will nominate then in consultation with the election commission he makes decisions on disqualifications of members of parliament so here he can disqualify a member of parliament but he has to listen to election commission so mark this as important then 
प्रिय परमिशन फॉर ए बिल टू बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड सो सम काइंड्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल बिल्स एंड मनी बिल्स सो दे विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड अंडर हिज प्रिय परमिशन देन असेंटिंग द सेंटर एंड स्टेट बिल्स सो सम बिल्स ही कैन असेंट सम बिल्स ही हैज टू असेंट सम बिल्स ही कैन सेंड बैक एंड सम बिल्स ही हैज टू असेंट व्हेनेवर दे आर रीसेंट देन he may also revoke an ordinance at any time so any time mark this this is not extreme then he presents to parliament the reports of cag then upsc finance commission and others okay so he is the authority who will lay all these reports in the floor of the parliament then the vice president as acting president so here article 65 so that enforces that a vice president so he shall act as an acting president in the event of vacancy in the office of president by the reason of death resignation a uh, removal or any otherwise and then when the president is unable to discharge his function owing to his absence or illness even then president vice president so he shall discharge the function but here the question is whenever a vice president is acting as a president so he shall enjoy all the powers and immunities that is given to a president but when it comes to salary so parliament can make any laws to determine the salary of the vice president who is acting as a president but until any law is made by the parliament so he will get such salary as mentioned in the second schedule so second schedule means so he will continue to get the salary of the vice president only so unless and until the parliament makes a law for that then come to next the president's power to assent the state's bill so here the article 200 so that gives the provision for a governor to reserve the bill for consideration of the president and here the options for the president on the bills reserved by the governor that is give his assent to the bill or withhold his assent and direct the governor to return the bill and if the bill is again sent back so even then president is not bound to assent so he can say that he can follow absolute veto and he need not go for suspensive veto here so mark this as important so in whenever a bill is reserved for the president by the state so president has the power of absolute veto so he can send it back repetitive times so here make sure that there are sarkariya commission punchi commission recommendations which say that there has to be a timeline given within which the president either assents or he sends back so he cannot sit on that bill for years together so that is a recommendation that is not given in any constitution then the definition of council of ministers and the cabinet okay so on the basis of this also questions have appeared so we will discuss that in brief article 74 mentions that the council will be headed by the prime minister of india and will aid and advise the president so this is given in article 74 and article 75 mentions the following things that is they are appointed by the president on the advice of prime minister then the number including the prime minister cannot exceed 15% so this is mainly to curb the more and more people becoming ministers and then the 91st amendment act provides for the disqualification of ministers when he stands disqualified as a member of parliament so at the moment of time he is not a member of parliament he ceases to become the minister also then a minister ceases to exist as one if he is not a member of either house for six consecutive months so on this also one question had appeared so we will discuss a meanwhile by the time we take up other clauses then the advice tendered by the council of ministers is binding on the president and it cannot be enquired into by any courts so this also is present in the constitution then article 75 clause 3 says that council of ministers shall be collectively responsible for lok sabha so this is the one article which propagates for the parliamentary system of government so we discussed about the parliamentary system in the first class so mark this as important and then the article 352 clause 3 so this only mentions the word cabinet in the constitution so there is a lot of difference between a council of minister and a cabinet so council of minister is clearly defined in the constitution we saw it in the last slide but the cabinet is present only in this that is article 352 clause 3 and this states that the president shall not issue or a proclaim the emergency unless the decision of the union cabinet that is the council consisting of prime minister and other ministers of cabinet rank so the cabinet is defined in the same way that is prime ministers and other ministers in the cabinet rank so who is in a cabinet rank who is not in a cabinet rank so that is not provided in the constitution so that is why the definition of cabinet itself is vague in the constitution so these are some of the things and here we can see the question that is according to constitution of india a person who is eligible to vote can be made a minister in a state for 6 months even if he or she is not a member of 
the legislature. So here it is like, can you bring a person of 19 years of age and make him a minister because he is eligible to vote because he has crossed 18 years, but he has not crossed 25 years, which is the proper eligibility for becoming a member of Lok Sabha. So such impractical statements will always be wrong in UPSC. Okay, so it is insane that someone who is 19 years of age will be brought and made the ministers. So nothing of such thing will happen. And this was a hypothetical statement. So make sure that that hypothetical statements that will be cut down in the wake of practical ground reality. Then come to next, the duties of prime ministers with respect to the presidents. So prime minister informs the president any matter on which a decision has been taken by a minister, but which has not been considered by the council. So this clause was present in UPSC prelims. Yes, this is one of the duties of the prime minister. So whenever a president he solicits any information on any discussion that went on in the cabinet, but the decision was not taken on this. So the prime minister is obligated to give information on that also. So he has to give the reason why the decision was not taken. So this is mainly to ensure that a healthy decision and healthy discussion goes on in the cabinet. So the prime minister will not act as a dominant person in the cabinet and he will not strike down any decision for his own personal reasons or for his own autocratic reasons. So that is the intent behind this one and then other works of prime minister with respect to president that is he can suggest the president about appointment of the CAG, then attorney general, then advocate general of India, then chairman and members of UPSC, then the election commissioners and the members and chairman of finance commission. So appointment work. So the in that prime minister is involved and then he proposes the names of the members for appointment as ministers and then prime minister decides the distribution of the portfolio. Then he presides over the meetings of the cabinet. Then he suggests the president of India about the resignation or removal of any minister from his cabinet. So here the removal is different and the disqualification is different. So president can disqualify a minister and he can also uh, remove him. So removal comes with the suggestion by the prime minister. So disqualification comes with the president's discretion because whenever a president is disqualifying a minister or a council of ministers, so that means the prime minister has lost his majority. And then he also controls and directs the functioning of ministers in the cabinet. Then he can resign anytime and can suggest the president of India to dissolve the cabinet. And he can suggest the president to dissolve Lok Sabha and to organize fresh elections. So this, he can do that only if he has a majority. So if he lost majority, then he cannot, uh, advice to dissolve a Lok Sabha. Then, if Prime Minister resigns from his post or dies in office, the cabinet stops functioning and spontaneously dissolves after the death of a Prime Minister. So here, make sure that whenever a Prime Minister resigns or dissolves, so only the cabinet will be dissolved. So the whole Lok Sabha will not be dissolved if a Prime Minister dies or if a Prime Minister steps back. Okay, so there is a lot of difference between Council of Ministers and the Lok Sabha. So even though the Prime Minister is not there, even though the Cabinet or Council of Ministers are not there, the Lok Sabha can be present under the suspended am animation mode. Okay, so that is why. So whenever a Prime Minister resigns or whenever a Prime Minister steps down, the Cabinet or the Council of Ministers will automatically dissolve. Lok Sabha need not be dissolved. And Lok Sabha dissolves only after the completion of five years term or if the Prime Minister who is enjoying the majority, if he advises to dissolve. Say for example, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, so he had a majority in the house and he dissolved the house for four and a half years. So he didn't wait for five years. So such the things, so can be happening only if he enjoys majority. So this was some of the things which I had to discuss then. Come to the last part, friends. So life is one thing like if we experience more and more failures, so more and more we grow. So failures are the one things which are very much essential for a person to have a well-rounded mature personality. So if we are not experiencing any failures, so that means that we are as immature as that. Okay. So make sure that you take all the failures in your life with a positive sportsman spirit and make sure that at the end of the life, you will succeed. So failures are the ones which has to become the stepping stone for success. They should not become the stopping stones for success. So do it. All the very best from my side. Good luck friends.